Hi, Penny Carlson from Topics in Digital Photography. In this video, I'm going to show you my basic workflow that I use for processing some of my landscape photos using high dynamic range photography. Our eyes can see more tonal range than our camera can photograph. We see detail in both very dark areas and very bright areas of the scene. High dynamic range photography, known as HDR, is one way to help us overcome some of the limitations of our camera. HDR uses three or more photos of the exact same scene, then combines them in post-processing to give us a final photo with more tonal range. In other words, you get more detail in both the highlights and the shadows of an HDR process photo. Some students have asked how I get great sunset pictures. I know college students don't want to get up for sunrise, but sunset and sunrise pictures are processed the same way. In this video, I'm going to use a sunrise picture. HDR is a great way to help us make sunset or sunrise pictures really pop. One secret to photographing a great sunset or sunrise is to actually photograph a great scene. Always have your camera with you. When on vacation, figure out where the sun will rise or set and find a place that has some character. Sunsets or sunrises on their own can be kind of boring. If you put people, animals, buildings, or the sea in them, they look a little bit more interesting. Remember, you'll get the best sunset or sunrises when there are some clouds in the sky, but it's not completely overcast. High dynamic range photography uses software that combines multiple exposures of the scene to help improve the dynamic range or the details that you can see in the shadows and the highlights of the final photograph. Common HDR software and software that you have a choice of utilizing in this class are Photomatix, which I did in a separate video, Photoshop HDR Pro, which I also did in a separate video, Lightroom Creative Cloud Photo Merge, which is really easy to use, and the Nick Collection. The Nick Collection is a plugin for Lightroom and Photoshop. Plugins are software programs that work in Photoshop and Lightroom or other software, but are purchased separately. Google bought it because they decided that they wanted to get into the photo processing business. Then they decided they didn't want to go in that direction. They stopped updating it and offered it for free. Recently, the Nick collection has been purchased by DxO, a photography specific company. Download it while you can. It probably won't be free much longer. So let's go to the Nick collections website. You can download the Nick Collection at https nickcollection.dxo.com. Although you didn't have to do it when it was offered for free by Google, now you have to give them your email address. Not really a problem. Besides getting HDR Effects Pro, you get a bunch of other plugins in the Nick Collection that'll do all kinds of things. Silver Effects Pro, will let you change your photos to black and white. Analog Effects Pro will give them an old film-like look. And then there are plugins that do similar things to Lightroom, like sharpen, reduce noise, and change color and exposure. You can find lots of tutorials on how to use these additional plugins. Once you've gotten the links to download the Nick collection and have installed it, you can use it from either Lightroom or Photoshop. I like to start with my basic post-processing in Lightroom. So let's use it from Lightroom. I have a bunch of photos that I take in of a sunrise on my way to work one morning. I was able to capture this great sunrise because I always carry a camera in my pocketbook. And I'm going to provide the photos for you on Canvas so you can download them and follow me in this video. Okay, so let's choose the three photos that I'm going to also make available to you. So let's take a look at these photos. This photo is the correct exposure based on our camera's meter. As you can see, we have a pretty good sky here, but it kind of lacks the intensity of what I saw that morning. But we have almost no detail in our foreground, and especially in the barns. And I want that to kind of stand out a little bit. Our next photo is our underexposed photo. 
As you can see, we have a little bit more of a dramatic sky here. And maybe I want to capture some of that detail in my final photograph. But we have basically no detail in our foreground. And finally, we have our overexposed photo. Here, we have a lot of detail in our foreground, and especially the barns, and there's a couple of horses sitting back there that I want to capture. But we've really lost that beautiful coloring in the sunrise. What HDR is going to do is give us the best of all three photographs and combine them into one photograph that gives us more detail in both our highlights and our shadows. You can go into the develop mode and some people actually like to develop their photos a little bit in Lightroom before they bring them into their HDR processing program. One thing I definitely like to do if I shoot in RAW and you won't have the opportunity to do this is make sure that I've enabled my lens profile correction. And then let's look at our correctly exposed photograph. And our lens correction has been enabled. Again, this will only be available if you shot in RAW. If you shot in JPEG and you have a camera that does lens profile correction, it will have automatically done this for you. Okay, now we go back to our library. And if everything went right with the installation, we go up to File, Export with Preset because that keeps the edits that we made in Lightroom. And we want to bring it into HDR Effects Pro 2. This will take a little while, and I'll fast forward on the video. And once the images are all loaded, we'll get to an intermediary screen. Here you make some decisions as to how you want to process the photo. If you handheld your photos, make sure you click Alignment. And even if you shot on a tripod, it doesn't hurt to click this. For this photo, I probably don't need to do much ghost reduction. But if it was a windy day and you had closer trees and grass in your photo, you might find that there was a little movement between shots. Or if you have people in your shot, you're definitely going to want to use ghost reduction. You can choose the percentage. With this particular photo, I don't think I need to do too much with the ghost reduction, but I'll leave it at 20%. And then it never hurts to check off this remove chromatic aberration. Chromatic aberrations are just purple fringing that you might get around high contrast areas. And then we click on create HDR and wait for our HDR image to emerge. I'll speed this up. It'll take a lot longer than it does in the video. Let's run up an HCR image created based on Nick's HCR effects default image. But there's a lot of different presets you can use to find an image that better suits your taste. So let's look through some of these presets. If I have all clicked, it'll just give you all of the basic presets. And we can see there's pr some pretty strange ones there. Black and white presets. If you have a particular look you're going for, I usually like more realistic HDR images. You can look at the realistic presets. We can see it gives us a number of different presets. I can take a close look at them here if I want to look at them a little bit closer and see them applied to the picture. I can click on it. That one looks decent, but I think I'm looking for a darker, more dramatic sky. So let's try this one. I like that one a lot. Maybe I'd like to see a slightly brighter exposure, but I can improve that either in HDR effects because you can fool with some of that stuff over on the right side here, which we'll get into in a minute, or I can just bring it back into Lightroom and optimize the exposure there, which is what I often like to do. We can look at some of the other presets, landscape presets. Some of those look pretty nice too. If you want something that's a little more artistic looking, you can look at either the surreal presets or the artistic presets. 
you can find some black and white presets among the different categories. And that actually looks pretty cool, but I had a beautiful sunset. I don't want to get rid of the color. And you can actually create your own presets, which I won't get into in this video. But I like that dark preset under realistic, and I think that's where I'm going to start. I saw the sunrise on my way to work as I was driving and looked for an interesting spot to take the sunrise. I thought these buildings, and there's even a couple of horses grazing in the field, provided an interesting backdrop for the sunrise. Okay, so I like this particular preset. We can actually make some changes over here. Often I don't do that and just go with the preset and bring it back into Lightroom. But as with any program, if you want to change things, fool with these sliders. Picture looks a little soft to me, so maybe I want a little more detail. And yeah, I like that better. It is based on your own taste. I can't tell you a specific way to change this photo, but you could look at all these and it depends what look you're going for. The deep looks good, but do I like it better than the natural? No, I don't think that I do. You can do some of the things that you can do in Lightroom and if you only have Photoshop and don't have Lightroom, these sliders will do a lot of the things that I teach you to do in Lightroom, like change your exposure, your contrast, your highlights and your shadows, and set your white and black points. But I prefer to do that in Lightroom. You can change your color temperature, other things you can do in Lightroom. You can add a vignette to the photograph, again, something that you can do in Lightroom. So anything that I can do in Lightroom, I actually prefer to do in Lightroom. So I'm gonna save the photo now and it will just automatically save it into Lightroom. So we'll do some more processing in Lightroom, and then we'll move on and do a little bit more processing in Photoshop. This is my workflow, but there are a lot of different ways to process the photograph. You can actually go straight from Photoshop and process in ACR Effects Pro 2, and that can be nice because you do it as a layer, which gives you some control, but I prefer to start in Lightroom and then go to Photoshop. So here's my new HDR photo. And it looks nice, but I want to do a couple of things to enhance it in Lightroom. And then a few more things to enhance it in Photoshop. So we're going to go into the develop setting in Lightroom. I'm going to work a little on the exposure. I think I want the exposure to be just a little brighter, but not too much brighter. I'm going to bring it up just a little bit. Maybe a little bit more than I want in the sky, but to bring the foreground out a little more. Then I'm going to fool with the highlight slider to modify my highlights. A lot of times with my highlights, I like to bring them all the way down, 100%. And I like to bring my shadows up 100%. You can see we add a little more depth to our photo. In fact, we can do that with non-HDR photos too. And then I want to set my white points and my black points. So to do that, I hold the Alt or Command key on the Mac, and I just bring it up until I start to see pinpoints of light come into my photo. I'm just going to bring it back a little bit till I just at the point where they come in. And then I do the same thing with the blacks, where I bring it down just to the point where I see the blacks start to come into my photo. That looks pretty good. And as you can see, I've got a lot more color and a lot more dynamic range in the photos. Where with the original photograph, I couldn't see the foreground at all. I've got a bright foreground and I've got a nice dramatic sky. But I think I want to make my exposure just a little bit darker on the sky to bring out that color. Okay, so I'm going to use the graduated filter on that. Here's the graduated filter. We click on it and it brings us to our menu. I'm going to hold the shift key down because I just want it to go straight across the sky and I bring it down until the center black point just hits the skyline. And then what I want to do is bring down my exposure on the sky just a little bit. Not too much. Just to bring out that nice dramatic sky a little bit and maybe I want to bring the saturation up in the sky just a little bit again not too much 
And then to go out of this menu, I just hit the graduated filter again. Okay, we'll do a couple more things. I might want to bring up saturation in certain colors and bring them down. One thing I find is when I do HCR, my green gets a little too green and too unrealistic. So maybe I want to bring the saturation down just a bit in the green. And make it a little bit darker, which I would do that with the luminance. Bring it down just a little bit. Now I have a little bit more natural looking, especially for a sunset. A little more natural looking green and foreground. If I want to bring up my reds, bring out the barns, I can do that a little bit. My oranges, and we can see with the sky that that can make it look really orange. Or we can see if we took it out. And this is, this is how to tell whether these sliders do anything. If we take it out, it really changes the intensity of the sunrise. So I'm going to bring it up just a little bit because I'm going to use Photoshop to make certain areas of this photo pop a little bit more and to teach you some of the tools. Right, maybe I want to reduce the noise on this just a touch. Now, if I bring it up too much, you'll see I lose detail in the photo as a whole. So I want kind of a happy medium where maybe I take a little bit of that noise out of the sky area, but don't destroy the detail in the photo. All right, finally, I'm going to go up. And I can wait till I was done with this photo to do it. I'm going to crop the photo because, because I think this photo would look better if I cut down on the foreground a little bit and emphasize the sky a little bit more. So I'm going to click on the crop overlay and I'm going to use a cinema format. So it's 16 by 9, which actually looks great on computer screens because that's what most computer screens are. And we're going to bring it so it emphasizes the sky more than it does the foreground. That looks good. So I'm going to click the crop overlay again and I'm done. All right, that's about as much as we can do in Lightroom. And we could really finish this picture in Lightroom. All we'd want to do is maybe sharpen it a little bit more. So we could go down to the sharpening and find a spot where we like the sharpness. And that would be it. Since I'm going to do my sharpening in Photoshop, I don't want to sharpen my Lightroom photo. To bring this photo into Photoshop, we just right click on it and then hit Edit In Photoshop. CC18. And we want to make sure we edit a copy with the Lightroom adjustments that we just made. So if that's not clipped off, make sure you click it. Then hit edit. 